mystery theory. Today, I'm going to share with you a, an unsolved mystery from history that really kind of has to do with the butterfly effect too that I shared with you this last Wednesday. I wanted to do a little bit of a <laughs> not lighter because it's not a History, and it's not a true crime case per se, but it is something that I think we all should know and we all should be aware of in order to make better decisions. And when somebody again tries to tell you that things happen a certain way, you have an idea. Research, make up your own mind, and you don't have to believe what others are saying. But just a quick look at history to help you decide. Now, and this is the story on how seven dollars set the Middle Middle East aflame. You're probably thinking. started in a produce market. 
much the same thing and even though they had no idea that what was about to happen in this produce market it was going to change not only the precedent but the future of Tunisia this farmer's market was in Sidi Bouzid which is a dusty city of 50,000 people now this wasn't where they would have to provide at least food to survive. There was this 26-year-old guy, his name Mohammed Boazizi, and he had to feed, okay, he was 26 years old, old, and he had to be uh, responsible for his mother, his uncle, and five younger siblings, so just so you have an idea. At least the basic needs for that many people. He had a small produce cart that he would put in this uh, markets, and he not only would do that, but uh, he would travel to different cities in the area to deliver these goods to people, so he could have enough money to feed his family. On December seventeenth, two thousand ten, he went. Uh, um, what's it called? Wholesale market where he would go and buy his produce to sell in his little produce cart that he had to go deliver it to his clients in different cities or different areas around the city where he lived. As I mentioned, he didn't have a license, but most people would get away with it unless they run into an inspector, which wasn't the common thing. She was a municipal uh, inspector, and he was the daughter of a police officer with a spotless record. This lady is not a police officer, but she is supposed to inspect buildings, investigate noise complaints, and uh, finding illegal vendors. <laughs> that was part of her job description. She would have to find them if they didn't have a license to sell whatever they were selling. So this inspector goes and talks to Mohammed and asks for his license. He says that he had no license, but, um, you know, a lot of people said that with a $7 bribe, she would have gone away. That's where the $7 come, and I'll explain why in the end. So, on credit that he is going to go sell that and then he'll have enough money to go pay the produce 
was suicidal. He was crazy. But I think if you think that the guy was crazy, maybe because of the method that he used, it's a little bit crazy. But when all you have is taken from you, start to 
spread um, across Africa and the Middle East. So these pro protests and this um, union of people that decided they were not going to take it anymore really help spread around. And the next month, Hosni Mubarak resigns as president of Egypt after 30 years. It is incredible at this point that these protests and these people were had so much power to change something that really was going on for many, many years. Later on that year, the mob killed a Libyan dictator, Muammar el what? say those names, I'm sorry, I'm sure I'm butchering them. In Syria, the protest become a civil war. So, Mohammed was a desperate man. But, at least, something good came out of it. He was a man who was struggling to feed his family because of the government that he was under because of the leaders that he had at the time. But the protest started, started in Tunisia and then they spread it. You know, the war against the corruption that was around everywhere. The oppression of and the tyranny that all of these people were enduring all over. Mohammed started it in Tunisia and now it's going everywhere. saying that that was the end because now still today it's cha chaotic um, there and people are making changes after a really really long time of not being able to have a voice in Tunisia so you have a better idea they had their first democratic parliament elections but the civil war in Syria it's just one of those things that it never seems to stop. I get this question all the time. And from my kids and from people in general when we talk about these things. Why do people keep fighting? Why do they, they know that they're risking their lives, their kids' lives for something that they can't change, that you can't change the government? No, you can't. If you're living in this situation that these people were, when you get together with other people and you're willing to pay the price, you can make a change, maybe not even for yourself, but for your kids, for your grandkids, for the future of a country. For those of you who know President Mojica, and you're away from where I'm from, he was in jail for 12 years for having a different political view and at the time the military were in the power don't get me wrong he was hiding from them he didn't want to get caught and go to jail but he didn't stop the revolution that he started against this um, dictatorship that they were going on at the time I mean it was <laughs> no questions asked do as I say kind of this was at the time that my parents were young. So, my kids, when they watch the movie, it's called uh, 12. Is it 12 years? It's on Netflix if you want to watch it. It's very, I don't, I don't recommend you watching it because it's, it's a, a, it really, you would have to know the history to make sense out of the movie. Otherwise, it really doesn't have a lot of action. But it's based on a true story. And my kids, while they were watching, they were like, why didn't they say, oh no, we support, you know, the dictator or whatever. Because they wanted to make a change. Because they were rebelling something that was destroying the country at the time. Yes, they had other beliefs that I do not share, but the point is...
this. I'm not saying that they were right what they were thinking in everything they were thinking. But I guess the point that I'm trying to make is if you want to see a change, you have to be willing. You you have to be willing to pay the price. Um, they endured uh, the worst in jail. Like they didn't even have a toilet. They couldn't get out of this dungeon prison. They barely. I mean, they had scraps of the the officers that would throw them scraps through a window so they could eat. Because they stayed 12 years in jail, a lot of people outside decided to get together and make a change, and it happened. That's why they were released 12 years later. They didn't serve a sentence. They were in jail because they didn't agree with the current government. So this is not the Middle East problem. It, this is something that happens everywhere. It shows that when people is willing to sacrifice, when people is willing to understand the idea, they can take over everything and they can make a change, especially under the circumstances. So I don't know if Mohammed, wherever he is right now, knows the impact of what he did. But I hope that that doesn't have to happen again so people can unite circumstances that they shouldn't be, when they're living under the circumstances of a greedy man, a criminal actually, a greedy criminal. I hope they understand now that by getting together they can make a difference. Does that mean that everything that they're doing is right? As united as they are, sometimes that gives an excuse to other people with other agendas to do horrible things and kind of leave the people that are fighting for freedom under a horrible light. So, just to make things clear, I this is a metaphor. This is something that I want to share with you. How it happened, so we can use it in the future for ourselves. When you have a kid that it's not in the right path, you must, you must unite with your family, with your husband, with your kids, with your people that are around you, and create something that can, because you alone can't change that. So, the seven dollars that he didn't have to pay that bribe, or was it him setting himself on fire? It just meant that he was the inspiration to make a change, and at least to get rid of those people that really were just stealing from the country. I hope that you enjoyed to learn this little piece of history with a mystery attached. What was it? Was it the people ready for a change? Or <laughs> was this meant to be? Or was Mohammed unstable?